Mediation or manipulation? How to handle divorce mediation when settlement isn't their goal. Welcome, Mum. Hello, Laura. Hello, everyone. So, Mum, today we're going to help anybody who feels like their ex is just taking them to mediation, not for the intended purpose. Um, We're going to talk about why their ex might have no intention of settling. We're going to talk about what you can do about it before the mediation, during it, and after it. And we're also going to talk about the don't be surprised ifs. And these are, these are the ones we want you guys to be prepped about. They happen to so many people so that you can be confident and not get knocked sideways when these things happen. So yeah. um, we'll get into it in a moment, but let's go to the jingle. Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorce mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. So, Mum, you were the one who was like... I've been speaking to people recently and we really need to do this episode. So can you just give yep. us a little bit of background as to why we want to talk about this particular topic today? Yeah, because since the changes to the legislation back in 2021, there was a real push towards mediation. Nearly everyone ends up in mediation now and it can be before they've gone to court and it could be before they get a lawyer. So I think it's got universal interest for people and I think I've said before, as a lawyer, I used to regard mediation, if I went with the client, as kind of easier on my client than going to court. But I've learned from talking to people that, oh my goodness, mediation is scarier to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can be because you actually don't, you, you end up, even if you don't see your ex, you're exchanging offers and having dialogue with them. So I, I, I have now changed my view completely and I think we need to focus on mediation, Laura. And I think that a lot of these types of people that come up with this problem, they've got manipulative controlling or narcissistic types. And let's talk about why they think their ex has no intention of settling. So what kind of telltale signs can someone see in their ex's behaviour or their ex's lawyer's behaviour that shows they've got no intention of actually settling on the day? How do they know? Well, the first one's a tricky one. It's they tell you. Oh, we can tell I'm not people settling. Things. People tell me, I'm not settling. I'm going to drag this through the courts. I'm going to take every cent from you. And sometimes they even do it in writing, in text messages. And so you'd be very hesitant, wouldn't you, about spending a lot of money on a mediation where someone said, I'm not settling. Mm. I'm going to keep going until I ruin you. So I think we mm. actually, I just jumped a bit. So let's go through this bit. So just before okay. we keep going into the reasons why. So mediation, like you said, it's focused on by the court. It's the bit that people can do and then get their settlement, their property, their consent orders, their children's orders without having to go in front of a judge to do it and avoiding the whole court thing. But it's kind of also something that's needed, right? Like it's part of the pre-action procedures. And we've got a great episode on pre-action procedures if anybody wants to listen to that. And we also have many episodes on mediation uh, that takes you through the step-by-step of the day. And if you want to go listen to that, please do. But today we're going to focus on the, the kind of like the mindset and the, the games that go on, <laughs> sadly, because everyone probably, without a doubt, unless you can sit and agree yourselves around a coffee table, you will end up at mediation. That's right. So I, I was thinking um, this morning about some of the, the court words and how mysterious they are. And how we try to unpack it. And I realized I don't think we've ever talked about what a pre action procedure <laughs> means. Mm-hmm. So, an action is something that someone files in the court, they take an action, there's a court case, right? And pre obviously is before you file in court, okay? And procedures sound like surgery or something, but really it's the things you must do, they're compulsory before you go to court. So, although you're not under the auspices of a judge are not being watched by the court at the time that you do your mediations. When you do finally get to court, if it doesn't settle, they're going to go, have you done all of these things? Uh, And so you're trapped. Like people whose exes insist on mediation, even if you know it's not going to work and it's going to be a waste of time and I think money too, it's very dangerous to refuse mediation because if you end up in court and they somehow manage to convey to the court, that you were obstructive in mediation, 
then the court may look at you as though you're the problem. So one of the things you have to do is always make an offer for a different sort of mediation. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but it's good to point out that this is a little bit of a, a mind game right off the bat because they right want to be, if it's a narcissist or a manipulative controlling time, they want to be seen as doing the right thing on paper and by people. And it's the sneaky behind the scenes where they're saying, I'm never going to settle with you. I'm going to drag you to the yeah. courts. So you would be like, well, why the heck would I waste that much money on mediation with this bozo? Wouldn't it be better for me to keep going and, and go straight through to court? But like you've said, with, and we talked about this in the Darbo episode, where they want to flip the opinion of everybody from it's not me that's the troublemaker, it's actually that person. And you're being practical, reasonable, and looking at reality and going, well, this is definitely not going to work. But they're just setting you up for failure. They're setting you up yes. in a trap. So That is absolutely right because they will only focus on your behaviour and they'll start the story with your behaviour and never start way back when they actually told you these things. So, yes, it's, it is a mind game, guys. So one of the types of people who has no intention of settling, obviously, is those narcissistic types who want to get you in a trap. Then you've probably also got the coercive control, really like family violence situation and play yeah. well. Uh, call 1800 Respect if that's you, or call Lifeline if you feel triggered by this. But well, it's it's a, a, a tactic for them to just see you again, to control you, to force you to be in a place at a certain time. And that is one of the reasons why these people do it. And validly so, I could see someone going, well, why would I want to go to a mediation when they're going to just do this so they can see me or manipulate yeah. me or stalk me or whatever? Yeah. So it is, it's really intense, isn't it? And it's really a worry. I think the, the key to it is, as I, I was saying before, is don't let them tell the story or spin the yarn that you were the one who didn't go to mediation. Okay. You know, Laura, amicable people um, may still not want to settle at mediation because some people, when you cut a cake in half or in bits, you never you don't have your whole cake. So some people want everything together so that they don't feel like they're impoverished or they've lost stuff. Well, that might be trying for a reconciliation. Yeah. So they don't want to assist in the process of separating because they're hoping you'll get back together again. Okay. So and there's then that as one. Well. There's that one. And then there's also the type that just want to drain your legal funds. Yes. Where they just are like, well, let's do mediation heaps and then let's get the most expensive mediator and let's yeah. use lawyers, barristers, QCs, everything and drain you for all you've got. Do you see that a lot? Oh, my gosh, yes. But it never ceases to amaze me. That person who's feeling I'm going to wreck my ex, I'm going to drain my ex, they're prepared to spend the same amount of money for the pleasure of it, you know, how twisted is that? Mm -hmm. They, because you know that it's two of you in mediation. You'll both be paying. It, it's weird. Mm -hmm. It's weird. And but what? It's cutting off the nose to spite the face. Have you heard that old yeah. saying? Yes. Yeah. And then the last one that I think one of the reasons that your ex might had no intention of settling is if, particularly when it comes to children's matters, um, yeah. there are some people who are fixated and will not budge on the percentage of care. So. Some people are like, I want 100% of the care and I'm not budging. And yep. the other parent's like, I want 50%. Or another, the, the common scenario we're hearing about at the moment is they're demanding 50-50 custody yeah. and they will not budge on it. And that does seem to be, what's the point of mediation if they're not going to budge? Well, with, the, with that 50-50 or so many nights, mm -hmm. You know, one of the fact factors, our listeners will know, that one of the factors the court takes into account in assessing the percentage of the property pool you get and your future needs is <clears throat> how much care of the child or children you've got. So if you've been a stay-at-home parent and the other person's been a high flyer, then it, you would expect that you would continue to be the person who looks after the kids and therefore the other person gets a reduction in the, the property they get. So that is. It's a way of making sure that the property settlement is more evenly split in that respect mm. because it's 50-50. And then there's child support mm. as well. As a, so sometimes people will not settle kids, they will not settle property until they've got the kids sorted or they won't settle 
the kids until they've got property sorted. Mm. So it becomes a big holdup. And not every mediator can do both. Yeah. So you might be listening today and you've gone, yes, I've just realised my ex does have no intention of settling because either they were that person who's not going to budge on percentages or it's that person who does want to drain your legal fees or it's that person who is a narcissist and wants to try and trap you into saying no. Um, so if you have now come to the realisation, oh, actually, I think my ex does have no intention of settling at mediation, we're now going to talk about what you can do about it. So before you even step foot in a mediation room, someone might get a letter, and we've had this a lot recently with some of our members. They've gotten a letter. I booked mediation. It's going to cost us $17,000. You're going to pay half. And it's next Saturday or next Wednesday. Yeah. What can people do about that kind of railroading where you're just like, what the actual, why would I pay that much money when that person's not going to yeah. settle? Well, for, you know, don't you, that that other person, if you, tr- if you try to say no, they're going to go, hey, I'm doing the right yeah, thing. See, here. it is uh, her or it is him. Yeah. yeah. So we need to unpack that a little bit. So one, I don't think anyone will mind if you need more time after a separation to go to mediation. We've heard some horror stories, haven't we, Laura? It's within a week or two weeks, which means these people must have booked it months before separation. And it's just, it's just not on because you're dealing with stuff. So it's okay to say, not yet. And it's also okay to say, um, because you're remembering your letters might end up in front of court. So yes, I agree with mediation. However, the, this mediator is too expensive or however, it should be something we both choose. So here's a panel of three. And you choose one of them, and that can be our mediator. Or he's too expensive. So how about we go to Relationships Australia? And I've, I've been, you know, I've made a call, and they'll call you soon, and we can do that mediation first. And I think what you've just said there about a panel of three. In case anyone doesn't know, I no. didn't know this was a normal thing. So this is a very common legal thing where if there's two parties and they've got to choose something. And one person has to do the choosing. Usually to make it fair, the other person gives three people to choose from. So it's like here's three people to choose from and then the other person chooses. And that's super normal for like valuers, mediators, family report writers, you name it. But it's not normal, is it, mum, to just go, we're using this one? Because what does that mean? Oh, it just, to me, um, as a a lawyer, it used to give me all the um, hair on the back of my neck, Santa, because... They may already have spoken to this person. They may have, their lawyer may have some sort of relationship, although I don't think that matters as much, but they may have heard something about the mediator that makes him think or her think that this mediator is the one I want. Mm. So it's an imposing of a person on you and it's just not on. If your ex sends a panel of three, like the panel being the number of people you can choose from, so if they send three people, You have to choose from one of those. Um, Otherwise, you will look like you're obstructing. If money is a problem uh, and they send you a panel of three expensive ones, then you it's okay to say, sure, but I can't afford the mediator. You'll have to pay. And I choose number two or number three. So if you're in that before stage, the best Hmm. kind of things you can look into is to ask for more time and say, "I'm I'm not ready for mediation yet. Um, okay. Ask for a panel of three, so you get to choose your own. Um, no, well, no. I think you send a panel of three. Well, you send a panel of right? three because otherwise, if you ra- ask them for a panel of three, they may refuse to do it, and you're no better off. Whereas you can take the initiative and go, "Here's my panel of three. Choose one," and they're really stuck. Yeah. Okay. And then you can say, "Sure, but can you pay for it? Or I can't afford it. Can we try a different?" So there's there there are some things you can do. Now, can you, and we get this question a lot, can you tell the mediator, this person has no intention of settling, why? Because I know you do an intake. Could you say to the yeah. mediator, my ex has no intention of settling? Yes, you probably, not in the intake necessarily, because that's not necessarily confidential. Right. I think maybe in the mediation, you could tell them, look, I, I don't know how you're going to go. Good luck with this. <laughs> But she says she's got no intention of settling, so we'll see how we go. Right. Yeah. So that's before. What Mm. about during? And I guess we're going to have also in there the don't be surprised ifs come up and we'll talk about them later. But 
during, yeah. if you do, then have to go anyway. So you sit yes. there in a mediation room with or shuttles are two separate rooms so you don't have to see them or you're sitting in the room with them or on Zoom. And you know in the back of your head that this person is just not going to settle. What can they do in this instance to make the most of it at least? Yeah. So the court has already prepared the other person by making um, them understand what their future legal fees are going to be and stuff. But for you, you're there, you're, you're, you've got to go for the ride, okay? So you can hope for the best, but if not, you can do these things. You can listen to the sort of things that they raise as issues, even if they sound ridiculous, even if you've not even heard of them before. And that will help you for later on when you record, when you make your affidavit, will know what their case is. Can you tell the story, mum, of when you used this really well to your advantage? So you had a uh, a client who you said wasn't the well-off one who didn't have yeah. anything. Then you had the client who had, the, the other side was the client who had everything and you knew there was no intention of this mediation settling. Yes. Tell me the story that, of that so people can listen and and maybe take some tips from this. Yeah. So I was yeah, a young lawyer, uh, but an accredited specialist, but I'd only been a specialist for about two or three years. And uh, this big firm, who I shall not name, had two very high-powered and I'd say quite aggressive family lawyers, one of whom was a family law specialist and the other fellow just was, yeah. So the two partners... I had the company had two names, such and such and so and so, and such and such and so and so were in the room with us with their client, who also was a bit of a bully. And my poor client and little old me were sitting there, the two only two women in all this sort of testosterone. And they were really fancy. They wanted the mediation to be in their rooms, in their office. So we went over and up about 28 floors and got into their office. And they had a, a whiteboard with printing out fax stuff. And that, like they thought they had us in a pincer movement because their client had all the money, all the business. Anyway, it went for a while. And then suddenly, Joe, that was so and so, said to the other person, Hey, she's just making notes of everything we say. She's not saying anything. We're not going to give our game away. And I'm thinking, too late. <laughs> So basically what you did was go, okay, if you're not going to settle, I'm just going to write down all your arguments so we can go away and rebut them before we go to court. We we put every one of those arguments in the same order they raised them in her affidavit and dispelled it, like got rid of the argument and attached the evidence. So yes, that was a lesson. And can you explain the way affidavit... So. Most people's intention is not to go to court, right? And I know that mediation is meant to be the bit where you don't go to court. But if you've got an ex who's got no intention of settling, that will be the next step probably that you will take. But, mum, there's a process when it comes to court, when it comes to affidavits, and it's always good to have this in the back of your mind, even if no one's even mentioned court yet. Can you explain that and why this strategy of writing down their arguments in mediation can help you if you ever do get to that phase? Yeah. So an affidavit is your statement of what happened to you and the principles as are relevant to the Family Law Act. So it's a big statement and that we do headings with the the Family Law Act so you're making it right. But people file normally are told to file their at the same time. And that means you don't you can sometimes be completely blindsided by an ex who raises issues that you never saw coming. <laughs> um even flat out lies. Particularly if you've got a narcissist or a manipulative controlling they're going to accuse you of things that they've done or they're going to make stuff up just completely. So you're saying when you're both filing it at the same time, yeah. you've had written little sneak all peek. this stuff that's crazy that you didn't even think about yeah. and your affidavit says nothing that even addresses that, that can be problematic. Can back, right, yes, because the only opportunity you're going to get to correct your affidavit is in the witness box orally. In the final And you trial. have to tell the court that. But honestly, what's written is much more powerful. So it's a murky place to go inside someone's brain who thinks like that, but it's handy to write things down. And you can, if you do go to court, you can have your cases ready to rebut what they say. Also, they may say something that is 
correct and you go, oh, hang on a minute, yes. So that's useful as well because it can help you reality check your pace Mm. as well. So I think there's a lot of other things that you can, we can talk about and you can learn about. Mm. But if you go and listen to Can You Really Mediate with a Narcissist, that episode also has some great strategies for the in the mediation moment. Yes. And I think I recommend anybody who feels like they're going through that to go and listen to that episode. I'll put that in the show notes. Now, Mum, we're going to talk about Al what we can do after, and then we're going to talk about the don't be surprised ifs. And yeah, I really want okay. people to listen to that because it's really important not to be surprised. Yeah. But mm. when it comes to after, mum, obviously they had no intention of settling. Obviously they haven't settled. What do people do or how can they make the most out of a mediation that hasn't settled? How, what do they do after? If you're separated or about to be and you need to get everything finalised and sorted but you don't know what to do next or you're looking for a way to do your own divorce and settlement without spending thousands of dollars on lawyer, then you already know what you need to do and that is to sign up and become a member of the DIY Divorce Blueprint. Empower, educate and equip yourself with the legal know-how and the tools you need to get divorced or de facto separated and finally settle. Work through this course at your own pace without feeling confused, lost, scared or overwhelmed of all the family law legal jargon and processes. Let us walk with you through this journey and show you a better way. But when it comes to after mum, obviously they had no intention of settling. Obviously they haven't settled. What do people do or how can they make the most out of a mediation that hasn't settled? How, what do they do after? So a lot of people say my mediation failed. And, and that's such a bummer, that, that word failed. So I think you think it hasn't failed yet or it, so far we haven't got there. Uh, so you walk out, you're quite bummed, uh, you thought you were there and then you weren't there um, steadily, uh, but put in an offer right away. Most people at the end of the day have pushed themselves, hopefully, as far as they can and there'll still be a gap. Now, your narcissist who intends to never settle, the gap may only have narrowed by what you gave in, but they don't give in much. But anyway, at least you know what your case is now and what the argument's over. So put in an offer to the other side based on what you've learned in the mediation, based on what it would cost for you to go to court, uh, how long it would take to go to court. So you, you put your offer in on a separate page so that can be shown to the court later on. It's a section 117C offer or a called a bank offer, they called them. But basically it just says, I propose that these orders and then, you know, that the house be sold with proceeds be divided equally, whatever it is, keep our super, whatever it is, you make that offer to them. Then with that offer, I always send a covering letter explaining why it's a good offer and basically telling them <laughs> what will what may happen if it goes to court from our point of view, without being rude. And so you can have your offer nice and clean so you can hand it up to the court, but your other letter can say, look, without prejudice, but do you realise that in two years' time Lily's going to be whatever or do you realise that each of the court fees alone are going to be $80,000 in this case and we're only 90000 apart, you know, yeah. when baby, just put some cases for them to consider and just try to tight, sort of corral them. It's like a sheepdog trying to get them into a corner so that they go, oh, okay, mm. you know, or they might go, no, I'm not doing that. What about this? And you can keep negotiating. Yeah, okay. So or you're... arbitrating or arbitrating. Next. Okay, so you're saying it's not failed, it's just no. another step. And there are so many people that do more than one mediation. And I, I know that the people listening who are stuck in post-separation abuse, coercive control, narcissistic types are going to go, am I going to have to go through this many? That's not always the case, but you're saying put in an offer, go listen to the Cost and Calder Bank episode where we explain that so you understand what that means and that may make you feel a little bit better that you'll be compensated later for their naughty behaviour and do the maths for them, do the maths for them. So look at the number, how much is it going to cost, how much is court, how much is all the paperwork. How much are you guys actually fighting over and is it actually worth the fight? Now, if you have a narcissist or manipulative controlling type, they're probably going to think it is worth the fight because like you said, mum, sometimes they'd rather ruin themselves to get to you. So that sucks. 
but you can rely back on that offer and the, the cost and call the bank thing. So go and listen to that episode. Now let's talk about the don't be surprised ifs because I want uh-huh. people, I want people to be prepped for this. Okay. So, so when people say that, oh, I know my ex has no intention of settling, I think I may put yeah. this one in first. Don't be surprised if they've been yes, yes, yes the whole way along and you're like, oh, okay, they're going to agree. But then they have brainstormed and thought about something that there is no way in hecky do that you are going to say yes to. And they put it in as the, the linchpin to the whole agreement. Yeah, the condition, yeah. So it might be that, I don't know, the like completely obscure example is you dye your hair green and walk around saying I'm a teapot for the rest of your life. Of course you're yep. going to say, uh, no, I don't agree to that, and then the whole settlement collapses. So do you mm-hmm. see that happen a lot in mediations, Mum? Yes. Yes, I do. And a lot of the time, the thing, like there's a difference in there between what people say in a mediation and what their actual interest is. Yeah. And as you say, some people's interest is just controlling and destroying the other person. So, yeah, I do see that a lot. I see it uh, where you're going along quite nicely, say in children's mediation, and then they go, well, we'll only agree to that if you take only 50-50 of the property or something. But I guess at least there's negotiation going on. But don't be surprised if that happens. So one of the things that we suggest you do is go away with your friend or have a cup of tea with a mate and brainstorm all the things that they could, if you think they're this type, that they could try and put in as a massive roadblock to the whole thing falling apart. Mm. And Mm. think of ways around that. If they are going to say to you, you must dye your hair green and say I'm a teapot, think ways around it. How could you do that? And still get the settlement you want. Like I know it's, I just think a lot of people go into mediation thinking they'll do the thinking on the day and you don't get the chance to do the thinking as much as you think you do. Whereas if you give it time and mull over a problem and think about all the possible avenues and scenarios that could occur and have prepared answers and have prepared ideas, you are better off and better prepared for a person against a person like this. Yeah. You know, that when if you've had arguments before you separated and they come up with really odd things and you go, How would you why would you say that? You know me. And but it might be what they believe, or it might be that they're just starting their argument against you. So you do have to think ahead if you've got a problem person on the other side in an, in a mediation, because they sure have. They have plotted and planned it all the way along. It would be lovely if people came spontaneously and went with the flow, but you've got that particular sort of person. You need to put your like your armor on. And one of the ways you can be is have armor is to be prepared. Don't be taken by surprise. Mm. So and maybe have a little response ready. For anyone who's whose ex is trying to lump children and property together, the perfect answer is put an offer for property. And now you can put an offer for children put an offer on the children's one. So they've got a kind of double jeopardy because if you put in a good offer on, say, the property, the court's not going to listen to an argument that says, oh, I wanted it to be a lump because the court's got to look at the what's reasonable and fair in property settlement. And in children's matters, they've got to look at what's in their best interest. Mm-hmm. I've got the second don't be surprised. All right, what's as, the second don't be surprised, Mum? Don't be surprised if they actually do settle. Oh. Because more people. That I think that it would be more people say they don't think it will, it will settle than say, oh, I'm optimistic that it will settle. And I know from experience, when I was a legal aid mediator, you'd get the file to read before the people turned up. You'd look at it and you're like, oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> and no. <laughs> so, and, and others that you thought, well, this is going to be awful. This is going to be really hard. And then like the people are practical. And so it, it does depend. I think. It, so don't be surprised if it settles sure. and be ready to have your alternatives there. If there's different ways that you can get your money, like cash or super, have it in your mind what you do want. Have, have it in your mind yeah. and have worked that out yeah. beforehand. Okay. So basically we're saying don't be surprised if they bring up something that they know you would never agree to. So think about all of those things. Don't be surprised if they do settle, which would be great. Yeah. yeah. But also... Don't be surprised if they 
agree, 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 agree. <laughs> and then you get to five minutes before five and they don't sign it. Yes, because even their lawyers think they've agreed. Mm. And then they just don't sign it. So is it like narcissist type or those kind of people where they want to appear to be looking good? That's the whole point of doing this mediation. And they want to yes. show the mediator how good they are and how organized and wonderful they are and, and their lawyers how great they are. But when it comes to the crunch at the end, they can't bring themselves to sign perhaps because that's not who they are and they don't want yeah. to say yes. Isn't that interesting? They, they might have been just using the lawyer and the mediator as blunt instruments to belt you up, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, because they can, he can send a message in. And you, when you get the sending offer back, he can say no and make, you know, have the game, yeah. have the whole day game and then not sign. Yeah. And I think yeah. that one in particular catches people it's, out a lot. It's devastating. Because you, yeah. you, I've heard people saying they're not going to settle, they're not going to settle. They go in and then I think I've heard that I thought they were going to settle and then right at the yeah. last minute they dis and you may have made concessions and all sorts of yeah. things and then boom, yeah. no. And then that yeah. brings us to, I just want to add this one in, Mum. I know we didn't talk about it. But yeah. Don't be surprised if they bring someone to upset you. How about, how about don't be surprised if they bring many someone oh, to upset really? you? <laughs> yeah. The mediator should keep control of that though. Yeah. Which support people. They should say yes or no. Yeah. But the classic case I've seen, and it's been more than once, if the narcissistic type person has caused a rift in the other person's family, mm -hmm. don't be surprised if the narcissist comes to mediation with a member of your family. No, that's 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 not so not hurtful it. and inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and you'd be, it would be easy to understand that you wouldn't be in the mood to negotiate anyway, and it would throw you right at the start. Yeah. So yes, and but I've heard it's the same thing where they they've done that. They've been having an affair for ages and then all of a sudden they surprise you, the person, they are surprised we're getting a divorce. Oh, and by the way, I've booked this mediator. Oh, and by the way, it's in two weeks. And then they turn yes. up and they're with the new with girlfriend. The girlfriend. Of course, you're not yes. going to be willing to settle for those people. So yeah. but there's a lot of don't be surprised who they bring with you or who they bring with yeah. them. And also we get to the next one that we have talked about, Mum, is yeah we've already talked about it where they introduce never before ever yeah. mentioned fantasy issues that yeah. never happened. So don't be surprised. I'll say this one: don't be surprised if your ex walks out mm -hmm. or threatens to walk out all day long and says, "This is my last offer. This is the last offer. I'm not going any further." And particularly, I think is is a terrible thing to do. Mm -hmm is a person will go, this is my final offer, and his lawyer sends it through the mediator, perhaps to your lawyer or to you in another room, and they've already gone then. So even if you wanted to change anything, even a minor thing, they're not there. They don't answer their phones. They're not there to mediate. So it's a take it or leave it, which is so cruel. And, rude. and I've had people that um, not signing thing that you talked about before, I it gets to the point where the clients ring up their family or friends and go, oh, it's settled, I can't believe it, or I ring the office and going, well, that one's settled, we'll cancel that court date, and then boom, like a mic drop moment. So, Because yeah. that, that is something you can have a heads of agreement, but then you've still got to sign the consent orders, and some mm. people just don't. So we've had members come to our Q&A saying, we've settled in, in mediation, and then two weeks later, my ex won't sign it. So yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. And, it's that kind of settler's remorse the next day. And that walking out, mum, I, I'm glad mm. we put the don't be surprised because I didn't know you could do that. Like, and I think a lot of people don't know that's a thing. And I think, I think lawyers must use it as a power move to kind of make their point oh. hurt. No offence to you, mum, but yeah. I, I genuinely don't know that's a common thing that people going through mediation know that there's an option that your ex may walk out. Um, yeah, so, or that you may, yep. you may, well, you could you do. try not to. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. So, but you didn't know. Yeah, be be yep. prepared for all of the nasty divorce shenanigans, mediation shenanigans you could think of. Now, Mum, you did mention having the lawyer there 
And you've talked about in the past, and I'll put that episode in as well, where you lock in each agreement. So if they aren't yeah. going to sign at the end, if, they are, if you think they're going to be that kind of person, see if they'll sign each little agreement yeah. as you go. And to be used outside of the mediation, because your mediation takes place in a lovely bubble of confidentiality yeah. and no one can. So it's only if you have a piece of paper signed that, that is as a result of that mediation that you can show the court that or you can really sort of say, look, they agreed at mediation and here it is, it's signed. Oh, I don't know what their problem is now. You can use that. Mm. Uh, but you can't use your negotiations in the thing. So if you did a whole big negotiation all day and they didn't sign it, none of that paperwork ever goes to the court. It can't be talked about except when costs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when it comes down to it, mum, we want to say don't be surprised if they do settle. Don't yep. be surprised if they put up something that they know 100% you would never agree to. Yeah. Don't be surprised if the little buggers walk out. Don't be yeah. sur surprised if they refuse to sign it in the end. And don't mm. be surprised about them bringing people that may ask we'll throw you as well. Now, when I people will be listening to this, they go, oh. and we've done an episode on it, but I'm going to ask you about it. In these kind of scenarios, is it better mm. just not to take a lawyer? Is it just better to just go on your own and not spend, say, 20 grand on a lawyer? Well, uh, I have to say, I, I think it's worth not having a lawyer if you know it's definitely going to be a waste of time. But sometimes having a lawyer there can help the matter resolve. So it's a matter for you. I think that because there's not just one mediation in most relationships, maybe you can do the first one if you, if you know it's just going to be a show for them, then see if you can perhaps not, don't sign anything yourself. If you get an agreement, a heads of agreement, then take it to your lawyer afterwards the next day. But yeah, it's hard. I think in hindsight, every single person whose mediation failed resents and regrets the money they spent on their lawyer, sometimes their barrister and the mediator, because it was all for nothing. And there's no promises in mediation. It works for most people. That's why we call it, it promotes it. But some people are just special, aren't they? Yeah. So I think you really got to sit down and think about it and go, is my ex, do they fit into this kind of category? Am I going to be kicking myself? If I've only got a certain amount of money, am I going to want to spend it on this? And like you said, mum, we've got an episode called, do you need a lawyer to mediate? And we talk about that topic for like 40 minutes. <laughs> so go and listen to that if you're umming and ahhing over it. Sounds like it. I'm a real windbag full of stuff. <laughs> but it is an option to consider if they are just yeah. trying to drain your legal fee kitty, then maybe this oh. is one of your options. But of course, everybody's situation is different. You must go see a lawyer. Uh, yeah, this is education We don't know your individual circumstances, but mm. I think the, the biggest takeaway you can take from this is lower your expectations of your mediation if you have this yeah. type of person so that you don't get upset because their aim is to upset you, most of these types of people. So if you lower your expectations to what's going to come out of it, but hope that it might, then you will mm. be less upset. And if they are really trying to hurt you through these don't be surprised ifs and you're prepared for it, then you're yeah. going to come out, like mum said, a suit of armour and you can't hurt me. Yeah. I'm all over this, buddy. And, and it's kind of like they have a playbook. Every offer is the last offer I'm making, if they make any. <laughs> Every moment is I'm going to walk out. Why? I had one court case back in the 80s where the man wore his wedding suit to the court. We didn't have mediation in those days. When they used to have velvet lapels and stuff. Oh, wow. And I, I don't think it was to provoke my client. I think it might have been the only suit he had, but it really made it tricky to try and negotiate. <laughs> She was sure he'd done it on purpose. But, but we words are weapons and, and mediation yes. sets you up for a situation where you can have words used against you as a weapon. And I don't think enough lawyers, no offence, mum, but I don't think enough lawyers or mediators understand that this kind of dynamic isn't no. necessarily from those types of people. 
to sort it out and settle and let's all be angry. You know, it's so right. that they can keep throwing those words at you to hurt, upset, hurt. and make you crumble and give in. And I, I want yeah. anyone listening today to think about how you can protect yourself from that emotional word poop that will come at you uh, and, and the behaviours yeah. that they're going to behave. And one of the best uh, strategies that I've always talked about when we, when we do touch on manipulative controlling and narcissists is to put on your science lab yes. and before you go in, make a hypothesis, okay? Mark yeah. X is a real piece of work. He seems very special. I've seen his behaviours in the past. He'll probably do this, 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 and this. Yes. Um, isn't that interesting? I, and then when you're in at the mediation, instead of going, I can't believe they just said that to me, go, oh, that person said that because of yeah. X, Y, Z, and my hypothesis yeah. was correct. So it takes out a little bit of the pain. And mum, you always suggest bingo. So if we want to call through <laughs> bingo to take I think that. We can have a little bingo card of things that they might do and say. So, you know, there's. It's a lot about what about is it? You know, you think you're really there and then they'll ask, what about that time you, you know, did this Bingo. or did that? Bingo. <laughs> but they take the power away because for me, if you if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So yeah, it's not so, a laughing matter, but if you can no. take the power away by, yeah. by looking at them like a science weirdo. Yes. <laughs> what is wrong yeah. with one person? An oddity. Yeah. You know, because with mediation preparation with a person who will settle and you, you should probably go through it, even if your ex is awful, you need to go through this in your mediation mindset. If I propose this, what would stop them settling or accepting that? And it might be that they want more money or they don't want anyone to touch their super, or it might be the real reason might be because they're just loving this and those want, but still go through each step and see what might stop them from settling. Yeah. And on a serious note, then you can be ready what your stance is on those things. We've done a great episode, and I can't remember it, Wayne Cropper, but I put in it in self current self phrase iron fist with a velvet glove or velvet glove with an iron fist. Iron fist in a velvet glove. Yes, that one. Yes. And mum talks about how to kind of look at that and massage them to get to your area. So I'll put oh. those in as well. I know it's a terrible word. Yep. Um, it's shocking. But, yeah. but to those that are being forced or dragged or have, you kind of oh. have to go through mediation at some point. Yeah. And try and go to a cheap one, a free one, if you think it's a waste of money. Ask for more time. And I know we I'm haven't mentioned disclosure at all, but we have done countless no. episodes on that, so I'll put some links for what if they don't disclose. Mm -hmm. But let us know how you go. Let us know if any of these tips helped and let us know what your bingo is in yours so we can add it. <laughs> you can send us an email at the divorce course podcast at gmail.com. And before we go, mum, I just wanted to remind everybody that our course closes for enrollments tomorrow. Oh, yes. We have a fantastic mediation mindset module where we talk you through how to prep for mediation, how to do the paperwork, how to do the disclosure, what to expect on the day, all of that. So if you are interested, go and sign up because that would be great for you. If you have missed that, if you're listening to this two days from now, don't worry, you can send us an email and ask to go on the wait list for next year and we'll pop you on the wait list. But I did just want to mention, Mum, we've agreed to become ambassadors for full of what's oh. Oh, which is lovely. a lovely charity that is just getting going and it is for it is it's a, it pretty much is like vehicles going around and there's some of the Gold Coast in Brisbane and they're just launched in Sydney and they're bringing tech and support and and just someone to talk to to those who need it in the community who can't get out to get it themselves and it's actually I'm, I met the lady the other day she's so lovely she's the mother of the son who started the orange, you know, what, what's that? Yeah, the laundry vans. Yes, the laundry yep. vans, but the, the homeless, homeless people. people bring their clothes. So go mothers. Yes. So her mother and son duo, and now she's set this one up because she realised they just needed someone to talk to. and well, They weren't getting women, you said, Yeah, Laura, the women weren't women turning weren't up. Cool. Yeah. So, cool. so this is a, and, a new charity. I would really appreciate it if you could follow them or have a look. And if you need their help. Please go and jump on their website and see where their next um, van will be. And they've got some great support there for anybody, particularly going through, um, you know, family yeah. violence. P particularly if a person um, at 
can't safely do it on their own phone mm. or at home, mm. you know. Yeah. They can go and do stuff in there safely. Yes. And if um, you, you're in a capacity to um, support them in any way, if um, you are lucky enough to have financial funds, they are having a Christmas appeal to raise more funds to get more people out there to support these people that need our help. And particularly with what's been going on recently to women in Australia, I think this is a great charity for everyone to support. So go follow them on Instagram at 4 Voices U, and it's providing judgment-free support for women facing domestic violence, homelessness, and, homelessness, and digital and solo, uh, social isolation. So I know we've got members who've said to us, we always say, bring your strong friends, bring your fierce friends. And they're like, I don't have any friends. I was isolated. Go and, go and have a chat to these guys. Um, and if you can afford it, they've got the Christmas appeal at the moment. I will put the link for that in our show notes as well. But thank you, Mum, for your time today. And Thank you, Laura. Don't yep. forget, if you want to enroll, you've got today. <laughs> so I think it closes at midnight. I don't know whether it's tonight or tomorrow night, but, yeah, so that's it. But thank you, Mum, for your time. Okay. Do another. All the best, everyone, with your mediation. Yes. Good luck with your mediations, and I'll put those links. Go and listen to those other episodes and really get your head wrapped around it, and then your ex will be like, whoa, who is this person? I didn't, they didn't react. They didn't get upset. And you'll be like, yes, because I'm wearing my suit of armor. But anyway, yes. created by Lynn Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> we should all give them little pins so they know that they're yes, a little with pins. Anyway, all right. Sending, sending okay, love my darlings. All. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Bye, mum. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.